Raylan is back in Season 5 of The Dragon Prince, the clip we've been waiting for, finally. Hi, I'm Adrian from Ember Nexus, and I won't waste too much more of your time. We'll be diving into the stargazing official clip with Rayla and Callum, and briefly consulting some of the official short stories where helpful. Right as I was finishing the script, I found this Tumblr post from shortly after the clip was released, and I think it's really valuable, so I'll be weaving their points in with my own and expanding upon it, but I'll let you know when I do. We start in the great outdoors looking up towards the sky at a shooting or wishing star. Dragons, the author of the Tumblr post, puts more emphasis on it being them wishing to be together, as this is what Rayla emphasises. I'm glad we can be here together. Unfortunately, I don't quite understand what they mean by Aravos equaling stars, but it did remind me of the short story Patience from almost exactly a year ago, which I've taken a look back at just for you. And to be honest, I feel like Wonderstorm was teasing us the whole time through Aravos. Quote, They turned their gazes to the sky, they reached upwards, and from the heavens the humans were granted their first lesson. Patience. It's almost like this moment is meant to represent the patience in the fanbase for Braylon to get back together again, whilst these two turn their gazes to the sky. Quite beautifully planned, I must say. We'll also talk a little bit more about this shooting, or fallen star, at the end, which appears seemingly insignificant, but holds dark implications for this season. Callum says, Even though we're in a totally different world, the sky still looks the same as it does in Catalus. Which is strange, because they're most certainly still in Zadia, perhaps he's just not used to all the magic around compared to in Catalus. In the following wide shot we see a horse and a shadow paw. I imagine they're not quite at the point where they're both happy to ride on a shadow paw together again, so I guess Rayla's on the shadow paw and Callum the horse. The shadow paw's presence makes me believe that they've returned to the silver grove at some point before this. We've also seen almost identical trees to these ones near Loxoria when Jinai proposed to Amaya. On top of the shadow paw we see Bait resting, and if you look closely there's also Stella. Most predominantly though, Rayla and Callum are seen at the top here in sleeping bags. Their equipment, unsurprisingly, consists of Ibis' staff, Callum's bag, his sketchbook, and for Rayla, Runan's bow and arrows, which we've seen in previous promotional works for this season. When I first watched the clip, I knew by this point already we were going to at least get someone trying to be cute. Look at how Rayla is leaning more towards Callum here. I was more than happy enough with that, but oh my god was I not ready for like in 50 seconds time. It's worth noting that no one else is at the campsite, they very much appear to be alone, and that would line up with one of the teaser images that released the other week when we saw Kazzy, Callum, Bait, and Stella in what appeared to be a library in the Sunfire Elves Kingdom. It's clear that they are willfully separated from people, so I'm going to be brave and say that they went ahead to Luxoria to look through their library for more information on Aravos' location, and this is just one of the nights they spent camping on their way there. And that would mean I was also spot on with my approximate episode 2 prediction for this picture, video in the description. The Big Spoon constellation Callum points out closest resembles the Big Dipper from our world, where it is most commonly spotted in the Northern Hemisphere, which lines up with where I think them to be, assuming that the equator runs across the middle here, or this way if the compass is pointing north. In this part of the conversation we see more bonding between the two as they share their experiences and different cultures with each other, both of them not knowing that the constellations were named differently. Rayla seems more than happy to share, eagerly leaning forward. Callum seems to regret asking. Just a tad. Trying to play off this wonderful new information, he begins to explain why it's received its name in Catullus, and Rayla again shifts her weight to lean in closer to Callum. These pages alone in Callum's sketchbook are pretty filled with illustrations, and I'd be willing to bet that they're from the day just gone, as we see Bait riding on the horse's head, and we even have great drawings of the shadow paw. In the top left, there's Stella in a tree, which is adorable, and also a focus drawing on her paw. Interestingly to me, her metacarpal pad, this large one right here, is reversed from the direction it usually faces. What significance does this have? I don't really know. Probably none. But I wanted to bring it up because it was different and it looks like a heart. Aww. On the right there's a rose with a caterpillar on it, of course roses symbolise love and passion, all that fun romance stuff, and there's a beautiful landscape picture with where they've been earlier with a flowing river, which narrows it down to… Callum finishes drawing the big spoon by retracing over a bit he's already drawn, but the only real gripe I have is that I cannot for the life of me hold a pen the way he's currently holding that pencil. I beg for you to try for yourself and tell me if you can, I physically cannot. Dragons pointed out that Callum sketching again is something we don't see him do in Season 4. To me, it's clear that Rayla leaving dissuaded him from doing so, and now that their relationship is mending, he's taken up the interest once more. Those five stars are Garlath's bandolier of skulls. For those of you wondering what a bandolier is, it's this. So it'd be some guy running around a battlefield with skulls strapped to them like a seatbelt. I genuinely can't tell if Callum knows who Garlath is, but I certainly know none of us do. It sounds like Garlath was some kind of warrior if they're going around with skulls so casually. Those five stars are Garlath's bandolier of skulls. 
Uh-huh, I see it. Unusual garment choice for Garlath, not very subtle. And Callum's right, it's not very subtle. He does appear to be playing into it a little bit, so perhaps he's just messing around. Tell me that this frame is not wallpaper material too, by the way. It's amazing. Rayla makes the very good point that... Annihilators don't need to be subtle. Which, yeah, uh, fair enough. Now, just to throw everything down the drain earlier with what I said about the Big Spoon being in the Northern Hemisphere, Callum points out the so-called South Star. What do you call that star? Of which we don't have an equivalent in the real world, only relying on the Southern Cross constellation and two pointer stars to point south. Which means I have absolutely no idea which way is north on this map. And oh my god, again with Rayla, Wonderstorm, please. I'm going to die on the spot with how good this is, and we're still not even at the best part yet. You can really tell Rayla loves when he expresses this part of his personality, shifting her attention from the star to look at him endearingly, before very quickly eyeing up his free shoulder to rest on. At which point Callum instantly morphs into his fish form from season 3, asking... What, what, what's happening? Rayla then follows up with naming the star Callum pointed out as Leola's last wish, nuzzling back in and getting us some cute cheek squashes. The post says that Leola was the unicorn who gifted humans with the first primal stones, as told by the Tales of Zadia official handbook, of which I have not read, nor the two season novelizations currently out, even though I have them both. They identify that the unicorn constellation seen in the season 4 star chart is likely Leola, a trailer I hold very near and dear to my heart for being the reason I still do YouTube to this very day. Someone also made me aware of this in the comments of that video too. That's not it though. Right as everything fades to black, we hear something very faintly. I know I've heard this sound before, but I can't quite remember what creature it comes from. I'm really sorry, but if you know, please, please let me know in the comments. It would give us great insight into what follows this scene. Finally, we have some awesome points from the Tumblr post that I couldn't fit in anywhere else. This entire scene was pretty much revealed in a skit at Comic Con in 2019 called Written in the Stars, which they called perfectly, so congratulations dragons. Attached in the post is a picture from the short story Ripples, and I'm a little sad they didn't mention any more than just showing the picture, but I've reread Ripples with this new context and I think this season is going to be really bad for our characters. In the story, Aravos describes how he's thrown from the stars, hence his alt name, A Fallen Star, seen most commonly in the Mystery of Aravos title card. He was a calamity on the land, causing despair to ripple throughout mankind. And here, I believe that the shooting star at the beginning of this scene is the telltale sign for this being a dark season. We've known that this is the direction the studio has wanted to take for quite some time now and this could be it. Personally, I think we'll also see an appearance of the Blood Moon Huntress. Surprisingly, this short story makes a reference to the other story mentioned, Patience, describing that, quote, We are doomed, some cried. The stars would not betray us. Patience, whispered the wisest of them. All of this relates to a quote from episode 9 of season 2, where Aravos says, Those who fail tests of love are simple animals. They deserve to be motivated by fear. Second to last, the post mentions how with Callum returning affection to Rayla, and her being comfortable enough to try something like that, they've spoken about things. Personally, I wouldn't be too surprised if we skipped over a lot of that and we only catch the ending of a conversation, just to show that they've mended it in a trip away from Umbertor. They of course still have this to work through, so not everything is fully sorted, but it is a wonderful start I will happily welcome. Thank you to Dragons for writing this, I actually recognise your name from another video I did, so it's great to see another one. Like I mentioned, I'll leave a link to their Tumblr and the post specifically in the description. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this look at the stargazing clip, I absolutely love how cute these two are together again, and it seems like we'll be getting some deeper lore too. A big thank you to my Patreons, and to you for watching! If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel, it really does help me out. But until next time, which should hopefully finally be an Across the Spider-Verse video, I'll catch you very soon. Woo! <laughs>